once again, they've left me unsupervised. Why do they do this? They know what happens every single time. I'm Rick Wilson, and welcome to The Breakdown. Good evening, folks, and welcome to The Breakdown. It has been a busy week. It's been a busy little minute since we talked to you guys uh, with the last show that Tara and I had. Tara is off tonight, but I have a tremendous guest, Harry Lippman, fan favorite, friend of the show. We're going to have him come on in a little bit and talk about the emerging, expanding, ever-increasing legal peril in which Donald John Trump finds himself each and every day to my delight and amusement. But first, folks, as you know, we always start off every show with Last Week in the Republican Party. Just because there isn't a pride flag in your child's classroom, it doesn't mean that it's not hiding in the janitor's closet, okay? There's a bit of Hitler and Stalin in everyone, so, you know, there's some truth in that. Uh, uh, uh. They don't care about whales because the windmills are killing all the whales. By golly, we are the greatest country that ever lived. And let's keep it that way. Are we approaching the end of times? I mean, the Vatican promoting LGBTQ plus ideology? That sounds logical, doesn't it? They don't even have the right to ask. And if they do ask, they have to be very nice. And I don't have to give it. Hey! 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 Let's do it! Let's do it now! Mark Zuckerberg, he brings beta soy boy energy. Elon Musk, he brings alpha energy. You accuse your Republican colleague, Lauren Boebert, on the House floor of stealing or copying your impeached Biden resolution and then uh, called her a nasty little bitch. That's in fact what I said. Once Trump started hitting back at you on a number of fronts, he took aim at your weight. What was your reaction to that? Oh, well, like he's some Adonis. I look crazy to you because you're insane. Well, they want me back. Uh, they want me back. They really want me back. The people at Twitter really want me back. We laid hands all over that place. We brought oil. We brought shofars. We're crazy. And if you come for their kids, they're probably going to exercise their Second Amendment rights. I just want to know where he's buying his human growth hormone or steroids <laughs> oh, or whatever Lord. it is. RFK Jr., <laughs> sign me up, brother. Well, what, what Donald Trump's lawyers were doing during that Brett Baer interview was opening the nearest window and jumping out. I saw people smoking crack right there in the open. I didn't see epic rap battles of history, me versus Nicki Minaj happening. Trump is, in my opinion, the first woman president of the United States. That's why you have no choice but to vote for Donald Trump. It never gets old. They never stop providing an absolute avalanche of content every single week. Folks, we have a big show tonight. I've got a lot to go through with you. I want to point out, though, a couple quick things. The Republican primary is going about how I expected right now. You've got Donald Trump continuing to pull away from the rest of the, of the, of the micro candidates, the nanoscale candidates. Um, and the one who was the big dream boy of the uh, National Review crowd, the one who was the sort of idol of, the, of the, the, the respectable conservative movement as they think of themselves was Ron DeSantis. And man, I said it a year and a half ago, overpriced political stock. You know what? I'm sick of being right, but I love it in this case. This guy has been flaming out a little more every day. He's had some terrible, terrible runs of luck. And it's all because he's really not very good at this. Here's Ron DeSantis with an easy way to distinguish himself from Donald Trump. An easy lift. A, a slow pitch right over the plate as to use a baseball analogy that Ron would understand. Let's go ahead and roll that clip of Ron and a high school student. Do you believe that Trump violated the peaceful transfer of power, a key principle that of American democracy that we must uphold. Thank Are you, you in high school? Uh, yeah. So uh, I wasn't anywhere near Washington that day. I have nothing to do with what happened that day. Obviously, I didn't enjoy seeing, you know, what would happen. But we've got to go forward on this stuff. We cannot be looking backwards and be mired in the past. 
you know, uh, that was probably one of the most gutless answers I've seen in American politics because this is the same guy, the same guy who a few weeks ago said he would pardon January 6th attackers and pardon people who have been tried and convicted in a court of law for their attacks on the U.S. Capitol. I'm sorry, Ron, you can't have it both ways. You either didn't see it, didn't notice it. Oh my God, I wasn't on Twitter that day. That's the same kind of BS line we used to hear all the time from Republicans who'd say like, I haven't heard what Trump said on Twitter about whatever the outrage of the minute was. Um, that was a weak answer. And you know, this is a guy, he's so snappy. There's such an ugly, bitter, nasty little edge to him. And it's always right there. And I still don't get it. I don't understand why this, he's got this massive chip on his shoulder. But the only president who comes close to that level of a chip on his shoulder was Richard Nixon. And the, the, the resemblance is stronger and stronger by the day. So I want to play another clip that we have of Ron DeSantis just getting mad at people because he's he's got a very shallow, poor emotional control, which is not something you want in a presidential campaign. Does it say that in the bill? Does it say that in the bill? It's BS. No, totally, totally BS. Yep. 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 Who said that? How would they know me? Okay, think about that. Do you honestly believe that's credible? that Trump violated the peaceful transfer of power, a key principle that of American democracy that we must uphold. Are you in high school? Yeah! On DeSantis admonished a group of high school students. And honestly, it's not doing anything and we gotta stop with this COVID theater. This is, a, this is ridiculous. But really, honestly, for all the money that he's been given by Wall Street types and and lobbyists and oil and gas energy types, there's a weird sense among all of them now. They're like, oh, God, do we now have to give money to Chris Christie? When you've got Chris Christie being considered a better candidate among the elite Republican donor class than Ron DeSantis, who six months ago, you know, they thought he shat gold bricks. Um, it's absurd. But the, guy's, the guy has really not covered himself in glory in the first few weeks of this. And when you see how, how nasty he gets with, with people who are positionally below him, whether they're high school students asking a question or kids at a school event or reporters, every single time, he never takes the gracious path. He never takes the uplifting path. He never takes the path that you could have seen from Barack Obama and I know not all of you like him, but also from George W. Bush or from Ronald Reagan or from Bill Clinton, they, they would find grace. And my, my old boss, George H.W. Bush, would, they would find grace. They would find a way to connect to people and to be kind or to be, or to be empathic or to build a connection other than, rah, rah, rah. he is a weird cat. Mark my words, folks, the clock is running on Ron DeSantis. Okay, so to get on with the big news and... Oh, yes. I, I do think there are some comments that Ron DeSantis may have Ozempic rage. Oh, 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 Ozempic. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Ron just is dedicated to diet, exercise, and playing on the uh, the multi-tens of thousands of dollar golf simulator that one of his wealthy donors installed in the governor's mansion of the state of Florida. Uh, Google it. It's, it's an absurdity. But I suspect the chemical magic of Ozempic. Um, anyway. Moving on to the show core, the center of our political universe right now is this wild speculation. Even as Donald Trump rises in the Republican Party firmament once again to the pinnacle, as all these other candidates are in the single digits, some of them in the not even single digits, his legal jeopardy keeps rising. 
Now, I've told you before on this show, and Tara and I have talked about this show many times, in, in a lot of ways, the things that would have disqualified a candidate before, being indicted under the Espionage Act, things like that, um, don't hurt Trump in the same way with the Republican base. But the law is the law in this country, and it still comes down uh, hard on people who engage in crimes. And Trump is engaged in enough to draw the attention of courts in four separate states and at the federal level in a way that very few people have fully understood so far. But our guest, Harry Lippman, is a master of this stuff. He understands it from his years in the DOJ, his years in, in, in handling federal cases better than almost anybody you could hope to have. I'm honored to have my friend Harry on the show tonight. And let's get to it and talk about Trump's Recent confession live on a tape with his staffers bragging about holding a classified document in front of them. Harry, how are you, sir? I'm I'm pretty good, but I'm trying to get my head around that week in the GOP. I, I don't know if I've seen that before. That was like some post-nuclear landscape or something. <laughs> that, what what a colorful band. We, I just we, uh, that. I colorful, uh, uh, parade. Parade. Yeah. <laughs> No, we do that once a week and yeah. and man. You know, they, it's it's an endless amount of uh, of material, yeah. endless. So so Harry, last weekend we got this big story out of CNN that said, uh, shockingly, um, that all the assertions that Jack Smith had made about Trump mishandling a, cl a particular classified document uh, was also on tape, where he's talking about it with a staffer. Um, where does this leave us right now? Because uh, I can't imagine Jack Smith actually leaked that tape. I think the Trump people did it. Just honest answer. But where does Trump now in this process with Jack Smith? And talk to us a little bit about the story that's breaking tonight about the potential for multiple other charges being filed by the special prosecutor. Okay. So but, first, the, that let's go to the tape, as they say. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit odd that it was a huge story, Rick, because what it did was just uh, give the audio to something that they'd already showcased in the indictment and pretty high up. Mm -hmm. But for a prosecutor, there's nothing like an audio tape. And so you could hear um, him completely ready to give away, we're not just classified stuff. He, he was asserting, yep, here we are. Uh, the chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff prepared for me and gave to me a plan to attack Iran. Right. Can you, can you get your head around what, you know, the kind of sort of kryptonite level secret this would be and his um, complete sort of, you know, immaturity and self-centeredness about it. And when you listen to the tape, they're literally guffawing about it. Now, yeah, it's, it's, his associate was says, ha ha, we have a problem now. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> right. Exactly. Oh, it's too bad. I could have declassified him. What? Because the big, as an evidentiary matter, right. it puts the lie for the twelfth time to the only thing he could try to contest here. The facts are so straightforward. But but does he try to come in and say something like, "Well, I, in my own mind, I really thought I had I had done it. You know, I just had to put aluminum foil on my head, and they were right. all transformed." Um, he can't. So this would this would make clear that not even Donald Trump ever believed this because he had a document in front of him. If he even did, it might have been all you know theater on his part. But he was saying, yeah, it's not that everything I took from the White House thereby became instantly classified. So that's the first way they'll want to use it. And then mm -hmm. second, it's, you know, version number 12. Uh, he contradicted it just two days later and since with Brett Baer and others saying, oh, did I say when I said this was prepared for me, the Joint Chiefs of Staff? Oh, no, what I really meant is it was actually uh, a Time Magazine article. So it shows right. it, it really shows him off, at, you know, it, but it's it's basically, uh, you know, you had the words and now you have the music and he just sounds like a really uh craven indifferent to the national interest kind of guy and that's that's what people were jazzed up about it i just want to say make the point that it's they they are not i don't think they have the proof that it is what he said because that would be dissemination that's a whole nother step in espionage right. that's like you know the rosenbergs and hansen right. and uh so they'll have those witnesses they put them in the grand jury and all he has to do is show them 
but I'm sure they didn't see it. It was Trump. You know, it's kind of like he used to be his own uh, press agent pretending to be. It, It may well be that he was just sort of waving him around. It doesn't matter in terms of putting the 200th nail in the coffin to to his confabulations right. about why he was doing it and he's he's defending himself and saying oh i was just, it was just braggadocio it was just it was just right, bra- yeah exactly yeah. big word for him bravado he right. said but but you know he so i was just lying about it fine let's just stop right there because in your braggadocio you were uh confessing that everything you'd been saying before was false and you were giving the jury a 12th or 14th response and by the way you know i that my um focus here has been really trying to zero in on what will the trial look like because you're right Right. there's this whole political stuff but a trial guess what every statement he's made under the rules of evidence comes in so the prosecution will present that if he wants to make his uh kind of crazy ass claims about these things i don't see who does it besides donald trump and axiom number one, in my view, to any all of these Trump criminal prosecutions, right. Donald Trump will not and cannot testify. So it's going to go oh. unrebutted anyway. Um, Harry, that 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 is a great overview of the tapes, folks. Let's play the clip really quickly, just so everybody has it fresh in their minds. We're going to come back here and, and and pick back up. Except it is like highly confidential yeah. <laughs> secret. This is secret information. Yeah. Look, look at this. There was nothing to declassify. These were newspaper stories, magazine stories, and articles. I'm just saying. He wanted to attack Iran and what? These are the papers. Oh, okay. This was done by the military, given to me. There was no document. That was a massive amount of papers and everything else talking about Iran and other things. And it may have been held up or may not, but that was not a document. I didn't have a document per se. Trying to figure out a, a, yeah. See, as president, I could have declassified. Yeah. Uh, now I can't, you know, but this is yeah, classified. Now we have a problem. Isn't that interesting? So when you send it, it's declassified. We, I declassified everything. All I know is this, everything I did was right. You know, Harry, every one of us who's ever seen or handled a classified document knows from the very start, from day one, when those when those operational security guys beat it into your head, you're not allowed to take this home. You're not allowed to give this to anybody. You're not allowed to talk to anybody about this unless they're equally cleared and you have a reason to do so. And it just... It, and you can't even do that except in a special room. I mean, all anyone who's ever handled this stuff finds, finds the casualness of the lies here just breathtaking you know right. a skip and, is that's some serious stuff to get you immediately fired in the federal government no doubt oh, God, yeah oh absolutely absolutely so i mean he's basically admitting and i think one element of this that that, that i find interesting is like he's saying oh it was just newspaper clips but this is one of the documents that they found at mar-a-lago right this is this no this, it's not no, clear it's not. yeah it's i mean i real my best guess really because they didn't charge it rick they didn't if they had found right. it i think they'd have had a much better argument my best guess we don't know is a they don't have the document itself just the tape and b this is just try you know he oh here we go i just happen to have right here right. that was theater he's uh mark meadows guys are coming in he's pissed in his totally thin-skinned uh, third grade way that mark milley has said that he was doing a wag the dog thing so so and his he, uh, mind goes immediately to ah it wasn't me it was you and <laughs> and has this i i think probably it was always bullshit but again for the charges Right. It doesn't matter what it shows about him, is, you know, really rounds out the case. But they, they're not charging dissemination, just retention. And that's that's important. But it's also important that they nevertheless want to you can bet for sure that that the jury's going to hear that tape a few times, probably in opening and closing. Also, that's one of the questions I had for you also yeah. is the jury's going to be in Fort Pierce, Florida, a fairly red area of the state, a pretty conservative area of the state. The initial thing was supposed to be in Miami, but the Fort Pierce is further north. And that is some hardcore MAGA country. And I know the feds have a very, very, very high prosecution success rate for cases like this. 
Um, There's no it, case like this, though, really. But go, right. yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. If this if this was a rando, I think right. they'd be a slam yeah. dunk. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on on whether Trump's people are going to try to nullify the jury or 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 the risk factors there of the case being tried in a, in a community that is as deeply conservative as Fort Pierce is? Yeah. Well, let me start with, and this is not bravado, Rick. This is a consensus view of any former prosecutor. He is toast. The evidence is overwhelming. So what can they try to do? Um, well, he's got this draw to an inside royal flush uh, idea that if he wins the presidency, he can make it go away. Right. And if he wins the presidency, he can make it go away. Short of that, it's just what you said, jury nullification, not an acquittal. You know, their hope has to be, and this is one of the reasons people are nervous about Eileen Cannon, because mm -hmm. the judge will have a lot of discretion. There'll be people who, who go there and say, I really believe in Donald Trump. I don't think he can do any wrong. And then Donald Trump's folks will be all excited and say, but can't you put aside and, and be fair your views? Yes, I can be. And then Eileen Cannon can decide, I think he, he or she is okay to serve. <laughs> so there's a scenario where it's a um, hung jury, maybe one only. He would take that, uh, you know, he would proclaim that as a triumph. I think right. the U.S. would then try it again in the long run, unless he wins the presidency, his prospects are really really poor for for getting out of this vise and unless you know he he's able to do it politically but yeah hung jury is a real a real worry down in fort pierce it's a it's a tough jury pool the united you know we, we've had a couple cases where maga people have slipped through and both times they applied the law i mean the law is so clear are you really going to believe that trump uh, actually, you know, declassify them magically. That's that's what you'll have to do. You'll have to be in a room of 12 people and and persuade right. them. Uh, so, you know, there's some hope that the jury system works, but also some concern that it fails in just this way. Yeah, that 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 I think is something that I, and I Trump is absolutely trying to beat the clock here. Um, absolutely. So that's my next question on this. So we've got a hearing coming up on the 14th of August, I believe. Um, July, 14th of July. July, well, well, excuse yeah. me. So, so, yeah. sorry. Um, where do you think this case stands in terms of how fast can they move it through this court? And how much does Cannon have to do with that, with the speed of that? Yeah. Well, the second answer is easy. Quite a bit. That's the other reason everyone's uh, concerned about her. But the U.S., you know, last week they supposedly filed a motion to delay that was a motion actually to accelerate. What they were saying is, we know this first thing in a couple months in August is is uh, just you know a a, um, a placeholder. But okay. you know what? We can do this really in December. And what it's all about, Rick, is the classified documents part. So there's um, there's different motions he's going to bring, but he has to bring them soon. And if he wants to delay. He has to really lean into the great difficulties and haggling that happens in classified documents and in brief uh, say, oh, we really need this part to persuade the jury. And the U.S. says you can't have that part. But here's the thing. Thirty one documents. And in terms of the penalties, they get 30, they get 29, they get five. They're about the same. So they're, they, the, those 31 already were chosen to not give heartburn to the defense, uh, the national defense community right. within DOJ. And in addition, they're ready to lose some of them. So the delay game equals the classified documents game. And that's the United States is saying we can do it by December. And that's kind of an anchoring date because now on July 6th, just in a week or so, Trump's got to respond and it makes it harder after the DOJ has said December to say, well, I think actually August of next year, right? That's gonna that's right. the, the sort of crux that they're against. At the end of the day, though, they'll come forward with extravagant claims for delay. I mean, the the co-defendant, Nalta, his lawyer has just been appointed. To, maybe he'll come forward and say, Oh, I need a few months, Your Honor, and uh, just to get prepared to this complicated case. And right. even a straight up judge who isn't experienced, and she's not, she's had four penny ante right. criminal trials, can get rolled uh, by defendants in this kind of situation. So she's got to really 
you know, try to hold the line, but she's got a lot of room to play with where given where the DOJ has been. If she holds it until, you know, May, June, it's still, it's still meaningful. One final point. There's not a chance that a conviction will have gone through the appeal process by November. So if he does win, he doesn't even have to pardon himself, which, by the way, I think he, he couldn't constitutionally do. He can just order the Department of Justice right. to stand down and not do it. So the, the big point is, will the American people, have, you know, who are like him, don't like him or in the middle, have the benefit of knowing whether the, their candidate is a felon uh, <laughs> and has, you know, and jury has found these things and uh, even but but his way to wriggle out is by winning. And I think that's his only way to wriggle out. I, I, I do love hearing that accountability is finally coming for this guy. I mean, it really, I, I still think he could, he could wriggle out of it. I still think he can win the presidency and get, and get himself out of it. But, is that right? This is your expertise now. But I, so yeah, I, what, what are the Vegas odds on that? You think the guy is, the guy is still, yeah. every time one of these stories about a prosecution comes out, Trump's numbers improve. All the other candidates in the field have sort of fallen down into the low single digits, including DeSantis, who went from 33% yeah. versus Trump now to, down to like 16, 17%, depending Something on the survey. maybe happens to Biden. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, look, it's there's a lot. Of, yeah, it's, yeah. that's why I don't get to take any time off. So, <laughs> yeah. So, Harry, that is amazing stuff. Let's answer a couple of audience questions. Kate sure. or Be Michelle, great. if you want to pop those up. Would Trump be disseminating just by talking about the content? Oh, yeah. They, yes. Great question. So here he is doing this and he says, see right there um, where, where it said the answer is yes. So under the it's the same Espionage Act statute. It's a different um, section of it. And all you have to do is communicate it. You don't you don't have to turn. I don't have to paper. physically hand the report to somebody. That's right. That's that. right. But that's, of course, you would really need the document, I think, just for beyond a reasonable doubt proof. But in, in sure. terms of the letter of the law, you tell them about and you can imagine, right? Oh, yeah. Here's what he said about attacking Iran. He's, he's given up the ghost, right? Yeah. 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 OK, next question. Jim Barr, the Lincoln Project can't judge. Can't the judge make Walt use a public defender if he continues to drag his feet in getting representation? Walt Nauda. The- yeah. Another great question, because here's the thing. What she has to worry about is getting reversed. So, yes, she can. But first, she'll have to say, if you don't do it, and now I mean it. And the sort of threat that is implicitly in the air is you uh, push me too hard, you'll create an issue on appeal. Now, an issue, it, it wouldn't be an issue on appeal to have a federal uh, defender. In some ways, it's an advantage for justice because Trump is right now paying for the counsel. But it's you, the, so that's the answer to that point. But just w- why wouldn't she, besides loving Trump, why wouldn't she uh, hold against him? The, the worry is the, that, oh, you're going to violate my due process rights and talk right. about, you know, a, even reducing your abysmal reputation. You'll get reversed on appeal <laughs> hard to see that happening but that's that's the the kind of makes sense that it hovers yeah all right these are smart questions folks let's hit another one won't trump become a martyr when convicted that's my answer yes <clears throat> hugely he isn't already right i mean he's, he's doing he's, I mean, he he's has has this, is, this is your fight like he's you know like he's dying for their sins i shouldn't use you know, religious imagery too callous people, enough, you know what I mean? there's a lot of there's a lot of cult like uh yeah yeah stuff around that and so uh yeah i do think he becomes a martyr i think he becomes yeah more and more um defined in the minds of maga voters as you know somebody who's facing down the the wicked deep state that's just doing this to hurt him and to hurt them which and is all these law school hypotheticals can a convict become president can he run? yes uh, you know yeah. the short answer is the american people if that's who they want that's who they get if he's convicted he can't vote but he can win <laughs> exactly go Go figure. I mean, it's something. Well, Harry Lippman, thank you, my friend. As always, what a great, great, great segment. I really As always a, such a pleasure to be there. And I got to I got to learn so much about the GOP. <laughs> All right. All right, my friend. Thanks so much and have a great night. You too. All right, folks. Well, listen, we got some other news to talk about tonight. Our old friends at No Labels are at it again. 
They've continued this campaign to elect Donald Trump for a, for a, for a second term, uh, pretending to be this moderate independent group, blah, blah, blah. This weekend, one of their founders went on TV and gave away the whole game, admitted the whole thing. They said, the reporter said, hey, um, your, your own polling shows that, that your third party candidate helps Donald Trump. Is that right? And she said, yeah. Astounding. They are, they are racing towards getting on the ballot in a bunch of states. Um, but every day now that passes, I really recommend there's an article in the New Yorker today, an article in the Washington Post a few days ago. Wall, the Wall Street Journal's got a piece coming out. Politico had a huge piece by Heidi Prisbal, which I absolutely think is a knockout. These things are building up. You've got to educate yourselves, folks, on the danger that no labels poses. Look, ordinarily, I wouldn't give a rat's ass about no labels and Nancy Jacobson and Mark Penn. I wouldn't spend 15 seconds of my day thinking about it. But Donald Trump and Joe Biden are going to be in a neck and neck race. University of Virginia today came out, with Larry Sabato's team came out today with their assessment and they've got it down to only four swing states in 2024. All those states are states that No Labels wants to be on the ballot so they can draw down Democratic votes, every single one of them. And we are not facing some academic drawing room Georgetown argument of, oh, well, maybe we should have a third party or an independent candidate. That's not the choice this time. The choice is America or Donald Trump. The choice is whether or not you are going to take the risk to destroy American democracy and destroy our constitutional republic by reelecting Donald Trump. Let me show you the clip of this woman, Holly Page, from No Labels. She is um, Nancy Jacobson won't go out in public anymore on, on, on most media, so she's sending out a lot of cannon fodder who are pretty unprepared for the fight. But let's go ahead and roll that clip. Uh, no labels designated Donald Trump as a problem solver in 2016. You stand by that? Um, he solved some problems and he didn't solve others, just like every other politician in Washington, D.C. For the first time ever, a president has been impeached twice. January 6th, it was the largest crowd I've ever spoken to. And they were there proud. They were there with love in their heart. That was an unbelievable and it was a beautiful day. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Nine member jury found that Donald Trump did sexually abuse her. Federal indictments, plural. A grand jury here in New York City has just handed up an indictment against former President Donald Trump, making him the first former president in U.S. history to face criminal charges. And including the unlawful retention of defense information, which is an Espionage Act charge. <laughs> Remember, they called Donald Trump a problem solver in 2016. Just process that. Just process that. And they're willing to take the chance. Now, they also have said that if DeSantis is the nominee of the Republican Party, this moderate centrist group, no labels, they've said if Ron DeSantis is the Republican nominee, they won't run a candidate against him. They won't put a third party candidate in the field. Why is that, you ask? I'll tell you why. Because a lot of the same people that are giving money to Ron DeSantis, these donors, from these mega billionaire donors, Harlan Crow types um, are from Texas and from Wall Street and Silicon Valley. They are giving money to No Labels and to Ron DeSantis. They, he's fine in their mind. He's okay. He's not, he's, he's not a danger to America. He's not an insane edge case weirdo. Um, who's governed Florida like an authoritarian lunatic. You know, today, by the way, <laughs> Ron DeSantis, you won't believe this when you process this in your heads. Today, Ron DeSantis signed a bill in Florida to allow roads to be built in the state of Florida using low-level radioactive waste. I know it sounds like something from the damn onion, but it's true. Truly crazy. Okay, so you know what, folks? I'm in a good mood tonight. We've had a great week uh, for America. I've had a great week. Um, 
and I'm going to be going to Aspen tomorrow to, to, for a meeting. Um, so I'm going to answer a few more questions if you guys want to hang out for a bit. I'm good if you are. All right. Let's fire them at me. Rick and Tara, what do you think of the Biden economics message just started? How do we message that locally? It is fantastic. Democrats traditionally have a very rough time telling a good story about them about their accomplishments. And Joe Biden has a meaningful portfolio of accomplishments. And I said this this morning on Twitter, and it really pissed off the mongers. It just drove them crazy. I said that Joe Biden's been a more successful president on every metric than Donald Trump ever could dream of being. And a big part of that is you look at inflation has become, it has suddenly started to spike downwards. Consumer prices are moving downwards. We have record employment in this country. We have record workforce participation in this country. We have a rising tide of small business formation in this country. There's a great news story to tell here. And it's not just the things that he passed, although those are good too. It's the leadership that he's provided in this country where he's made people feel more secure, more certain, less like they're on the edge of chaos all the time. Now, as for the local application of these messages, both the Inflation Reduction Act and the Infrastructure Bill are having a massive impact across this country. They're having a massive impact economically, and they will continue to do so for the next year or two. Um, I'm sure there's a database of it. We'll find it for you and post it on the on the uh, LP uh, Twitter feed um, of, of the projects per zip code, the projects per area. One way you know these projects are important is that these weirdo scumbag edge cases who voted against them, like Tommy Tuberville in... Uh, Alabama, he voted against the infrastructure bill. And yet he puts out a tweet saying, I can't wait to bring $327 million of rural broadband to our home state. It's that sort of thing you can point out on the local level, tell that story on the local level and say to folks, hey, you know what? We're getting finally going to get the bridge on State Road 40 repaved and, and, and secure again. We're going to get New, you know, we're going to get the, the local airport will be improved. They're going to pay for the runway so we can bring in more flights. We're going to do all these things that seem nuts and bolts. And, but, you know, nuts and bolts actually works in politics. Explaining something people can tangibly understand in their daily life is better than the amorphous sort of feeling of, I passed the magical infrastructure bill. They get that sort of, but they really understand, oh, well, we're going to put new traffic lights in this dangerous intersection and the infrastructure bill is paying for it. That sort of thing. Um, let's hit another one. What the Dems need to do immediately to lessen the possible protect anything should the Republicans win? Um, I'll give you three big talking points on that, on that question. The first, the very first thing they have to do is fight tooth and nail every single day to get as many appointments to the federal bench as they possibly can. Because I'm promising you when the Republicans, if the Republicans win again, they're going to come in here and tear things to the ground. They're going to burn things to the ground. Um, the second thing they folks need to do is to try to pass single subject bills as quickly as possible. The, the, these big omnibus bills, infrastructure bill, uh, 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 Inflation Reduction Act, those are large and complicated, take a year or two to pass. They need to start narrowing down on some very specific things. I would start... I would start by narrowing um, uh, narrowing down on a few key issues where the Republicans are going to try to steal a march on the Democrats. Corruption is a big one. I would pass the Stocks Act immediately that prevents members of Congress from trading in stocks and bonds or, or marketable securities of any kind. Um, but you got to drill down fast on that legislatively because we're going to enter the dead zone pretty soon. Um, the next thing I would do is, is try to engage in a lot of, of essential organizing in the states at the state levels that that involve voter registration that involve if they win the house at a, a larger number or take the senate that it's a that is a short-lived victory i am actually optimistic right now that republicans losing the house of representatives i think there's a path to do it i think it's a it's a narrow path but there's a path to do it they're so divided they're so bitter they're going to be so many ugly primaries in the gop there's an actual chance to make that happen okay next one If Putin falls, how will it impact Trump? Trump's having a bad day no matter what right now. Vladimir Putin is in survival mode. Vladimir Putin is not going to be out writing checks or helping his buddy. He's not going to be out running the troll farm for his buddy. Vladimir Putin right now 
has a very, very slim chance of surviving the rest of the year. Um, no dictator in history can show weakness and survive. He showed weakness. Um, the, the fact that Perosian is still alive um, is, is every minute he's still alive, um, Vladimir Putin's life is, un, is in danger. So Putin is internally focused right now. He would love to keep effing with the United States, but right now um, his, his best boy, Donald Trump, is on his own in that regard. Great question, Elizabeth, by the way. All right. What's my opinion on Cornell West? I, I got no opinion, honestly. Um, here's my worry. Again, like no labels, anybody that's out there on the independent side is going to draw votes away from Joe Biden for the most part, mathematically speaking, um, from all the analysis and all the polling that's out there. And so I worry that Cornell will drag in some states one or 2% off of Joe Biden and give Donald Trump the win. Um, Cornell's a very smart guy. He's a very respected academic, but I don't know who talked him into this, but they're not doing America any favors. Did Rudy take a deal? I think he did. I think Rudy did take a deal. I have a suspicion about that. Um, and I think that Rudy as I know, I know for a fact he's at the end of his rope financially and personally. The guy has nothing left to, to sell. The guy has nothing left to give. He's not, you know, selling cameos and ads on his podcast is not make, not paying the bills. Um, I would bet you he took a deal. He'll hate having taken a deal and he'll try to make it as narrow as possible. But I think he took a deal. So. Rick Fairfax, how likely is the scenario that Trump does not win the nomination, then he sabotages the Republican nominee of the general? Yeah, a hundred percent. Rick, it is a it, this is this is the bomb vest Trump wears all the time. This is the suicide pact they've made with Donald Trump. If he goes, and we we have survey work on this that will blow your damn. And, and in fact, the Lincoln Democracy Institute this week, our C4 arm has put out the first of some amazing polling we're doing. We'll post it up on the Lincoln Project website again after the show um, to look at the audiences of voters that are out there. And we've learned that Republican voters who are Trump supporters, that's it. They're not moving. They don't want to go anywhere else. I think that Trump could easily lose the nomination. If he, or if he lost the nomination, he could easily just say, I was cheated. It's rigged. I don't like Ron DeSantimonious, and I'm going to vote for somebody else. I'm going to write myself in. You could get seven, eight percent of the national voting pool voting that for Donald Trump on a right end, or not voting at all, or staying home. I wish there was a path where I thought this was likely, but I think the odds are still that Donald Trump is going to pick up the nomination, and I think he'll probably have it in the bag. By January, late part of January, early part of February of next year, just because these other guys are not going to survive the debates and, and they're not going to be able to financially stick with him uh, through the fight. All right, one more question, then we will start wrapping up for tonight. How do we fight no labels? Three big things. One, there are a lot of groups out there that are, that are sharing with their friends content from the Lincoln Project, from Third Way from the National Democrats that, that explains what No Labels is doing. Sharing that content with your friends. Because look, No Labels sounds great on paper. Oh, we're centrist moderates. We're the nice ones. We just want everybody to have a new option. It sounds great. But it's like ordering a delicious pizza that has nuclear waste on it. Uh, it's going to kill you, no matter how, how much you like it in the short term. Um, we're going to keep pushing out the message on no labels. We'll be talking about them a lot in the coming weeks. There will be things we're going to reveal about Nancy Jacobson and Mark Penn and their business uh, behind no labels and what they're doing, why they're doing this. Uh, that is that I think we'll have a lot of attention and we'll hope you folks will share that information as we go forward. So we've also got coming up, um, you know, we're going to see some debates with the Republican Party coming up soon. Uh, and it looks like right now, if the, if the debates were going to be held right now, the only people on stage would be Trump, DeSantis, Christie, and Vivek. Who knew? Um, but we're going to have some bloody, bloody primary battles coming up soon, guys. Keep your eye on it because it really is going to be, um, uh, it's going to be very telling how they're going to try to run against Joe Biden. It's going to be very telling how they're going to try to 
try to make you know, a fantasy version of a good economy and a, and a nation that is respected and strong in the world again into a dystopian hellscape of their imaginings. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that in the coming weeks. Folks, it's also July 4th this weekend. Take a moment to, to celebrate that this country, no matter how much we've been through in the last eight years, no matter how difficult it's been to think that this country can hang together and this country can can sustain its long arc of motion forward into history and that the providential beauty of this nation can, can be sustained, it can. And July 4th celebrates that. It celebrates the formation and the founding of this country in a way that, that we have a lot to be proud of. We are an imperfect nation and always have been. We will always be an imperfect nation. But I've discovered in life, you can love something that's imperfect. And God knows I benefit from that principle. Um, and, and I will say that I hope you guys have a great fourth. Take some time. Take a deep breath. The campaign season in the fall is going to race up on us faster than you think. Spend time with your families. Um, it, engage in whatever fireworks, drinking, not at the same time, roasting of various meats, um, and enjoyment of the day that you can. Um, I'm going to be sitting my ass by the pool drinking cocktails when I get back from Colorado. And that is something I'm truly looking forward to. Um, with that, folks, have a great weekend. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to the, the, the breakdown. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your, your, your comments, your support, your views. And we've had so many emails and so many people asking. We're going to go back to at least once a week on the breakdown coming up probably by the end of the summer. Um, I think it's important, this dialogue, the things we hear from our, 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 our viewers and our people in the chats, they're so important to us and you guys all matter so much to us. So do me a favor, like and subscribe, do all the things, share it with your friends. We love you. We'll be seeing you again right after the 4th of July and uh, keep, the, keep the blue side up and uh, let's play it out with our 4th of July ad. The American flag today flies over a nation divided. A nation where hatred and violence makes a mockery of the sacrifices of generations. A nation where one party storms the Capitol in a violent attempt to overthrow a free and fair election. A nation where one party claims ownership of the flag and the very idea of patriotism. It's time to fight back. To take back the flag from those who dishonor it. The symbols of our republic, this bold experiment that has struggled and bled to bend the arc of history, don't belong to the Republican Party. They don't belong to Donald Trump or Fox News or violent terrorists. The flag belongs to every American. It's not their flag. It's not his flag. It's our flag.